الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد 
My dear beloved, respected brothers and sisters, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make me, you, and our descendants steadfast on his deen. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. One of the greatest blessings that Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the blessing of concise speech. Concise speech. Few words. He utters few words. Yet you can write books about. Like for example, when Mu'adh came to him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, give me an advice. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttered three statements that summarized Islam. He told him, Ya Mu'adh, ittaqillah haythu ma kunt wa atbi'i sayyi al-hasana tamhuha wa khaliq al-nas bi khuluq hasan. O Mu'adh, have taqwa of Allah wherever you are that take care of the relationship of the human being with his creator and follow an evil deed with a good deed, it will erase it. That will take care of everybody with their own a'mal. And treat mankind, not only Muslims, treat mankind with good manners that take care of the mu'amalat. Three statements that summarize the whole deen. This is what concise speech means. Today's hadith is not three statements. Today's hadith that we will be discussing is three words. Literally three words. And if we follow these three words from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every father, if he applies them with his family, he will have a peaceful household. If the imam applies it with his congregation, he will have a peaceful congregation, peaceful community. If the principal, the teacher applies it with his students, he will have a productive classroom. If the president applies it with his people, he will have a peaceful, secure, successful people. What is the hadith? المؤمن مرآة المؤمن The believer is the mirror of his fellow believer. In another narration, المؤمن مرآة أخيه The believer is the mirror of his brother. My brothers and sisters, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says mirror, it means mirror. It does not mean image. It does not mean x-ray. It does not mean photocopy. Mirror means mirror. Just like he, Rasulullah sallallahu said, when a fly falls into your soup, take it out, dip it back again, and if you need to drink that soup, go ahead and drink it. So he said a fly. If a mosquito fell, I do not apply the same thing. Similarly here, Rasulullah sallallahu used the word mirror. Why mirror? Listen to how eloquent is our dear, beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there are few characteristics we will be learning today about this hadith. You might have, learned, you might have heard this hadith many times. But inshallah ta'ala, after the khutbah today, you will be not only learning the hadith, but applying the hadith. First, the mirror does not lie. The mirror does not lie. If I am wearing a white garment, if I am wearing a white thobe, and I stand in front of the mirror, and I have stain on my thobe, the mirror will tell me, you have a stain. Similarly, the believer, when he sees his brother or his sister sinning, he or she has to tell them, Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi an al munkar. He or she has to tell them, brother, sister, what you are doing is wrong. This is a sin. This is a major sin. We have to advise them. You are their mirror. How to advise them? Bring us to the second characteristic of the mirror. The mirror is so gentle. With one pebble, you can shatter the mirror. Similarly, 
When you are advising your brother or when you are advising your sister, you have to be extremely gentle. The way you give the advice will decide the outcome. So you do not go in public and tell them about their mistake. And nasiha fil mala fadiha, giving advice in public is disgrace, it's a scandal. I see my sister posting her picture on, uh, on social media with hijab or without hijab. I do not, some of the brothers, mashallah, you look cute, sister, and they put thumbs up or they put the heart. Ya akhi taqillah, fear Allah. Private message your sister. Tell her sister, this is not right. This is wrong. Anybody can see your picture. This is a public platform. Can take your picture and while he's sitting in the bathroom, staring at you. Who would want that on their, on their sisters or wives or daughters? Privately, I tell my sister, when I see something wrong, I say something. And if you are on the other end, do not be upset if someone gives you the advice. Ya akhi, listen to what Umar radiallahu anhu said. He used to say, Rahim Allahum ri'in ahda ilayya uyubi. He used to make dua of rahma to the person who, listen to the word he gifted, he, he, he used. He said, may Allah have mercy on the person who gifted me. Ahda from hadiyya. Who gifted me my shortcomings. I take the brother privately. I saw this, uh, you know, you're posting this. This is not right, Akhi. Wallahi, you are, uh, I heard the hadith that I am your mirror and you're mine. And I'm supposed to advise you, Akhi. All you have to do is advice. You're not going to beat the brother or beat the sister. No, your job is to give the advice. A deen and nasiha, two word hadith. Deen is advice. You tell the brother, Rasulullah told us, لا يؤمن أحدكم. I am not a true believer until I love to my brother, until I love to my sister what I love to myself. And I do not like this to myself, so I do not like it to you. In a very gentle manner, do not be harsh. لو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لن فضوا من حولك. If you are harsh, people will run away from you. You will never take advice from you. The second Third characteristic of the mirror, if you clean 10% of the stain, the mirror will tell you that you have cleaned 10%. Your brother was addicted to alcohol and he went down from two, three bottles a day to maybe one can. Allahu Akbar, keep going brother. You can do it. He used to smoke one package, now he's down to five cigarettes. Allahu Akbar. Go ahead. I'm here with you. You can do it. Continue. The mirror will tell you when you are improving. Fourth, the mirror does not exaggerate the image. If you come with a stain this big, the mirror does not show the stain, it's this big. If a, brother, I, if a brother in front of me, he ate with his left hand, I don't call him a kafir. And similarly, if a brother is committing a major sin, I don't tell him, it's okay, brother. Inna Allah ghafoorur rahim. No, I tell him, brother, you have to repent. You must ask Allah Azza wa Jal for forgiveness. This is wrong. But I do not exaggerate the problem that my brother is facing. Fifth, if you clean the whole stain, And you come back after two weeks and stand in front of the mirror. The mirror will not tell you that you used to have a stain. My brother repented. My brother cleansed himself. He worked hard 
to clean that stain. And when he comes back, and this happens unfortunately a lot, a man used to gamble and he stopped gambling. A man used to smoke and drink alcohol. And a man or a sister, used not, she, she did not wear the hijab. And all of a sudden, Allah guided them. And not only they started practicing, but they went also and started telling others about the deen. They became a da'iyah. So some of us, <laughs> you forgot who you were? Three weeks ago, you were singing, you were a rapper, you were a Hindu, you were a Christian. Now you're telling us what to do? The mirror will never remind you about the previous stain. Allah said in Surah Al-Hujurat, don't ever remind the person of his fusk, of his transgression after he became a mu'min. This is exactly what the mirror does. And we should treat each other just like the mirror. Six, subhanAllah. The mirror shows the stain and it also shows all the other clean stuff around it. My brother, your thawb is amazing, so beautiful, but you have that small stain right there. I do not ignore all the great things that my brother is doing. And I focus only on that mistake that he or she are doing. This happens a lot with married couple. The husband does 200,000 great things and he does one bad thing. All the 200,000 forgotten. And the wife start picking only on that bad thing. And also vice versa. The sister is amazing in everything. Great practicing Muslimah. All he sees is that her food is not spicy enough. Or her cleaning is not really excellent. Yeah, akhi, look at the magnify the positive. Magnify the positive. This is exactly what the mirror does. When you look at the mirror, you don't only see a stain, you see a small stain, but you see all white, beautiful thawb. Acknowledge, acknowledge the good, just like you have acknowledged the bad. Seven, If you have a stain in the back of your thawb, the mirror will not bring it up. If you have a stain in the back of your garment, the mirror will not bring it up. I came to you and I said, I need your advice, brother. I'm having a problem with my blood brother. You having a problem with blood brother? Last time you came, you had a problem with your sister, with your mother, with your father. No, 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 focus. The brother is coming to talk about a certain issue. Do not bring the past. Or I heard that you are doing this and doing that. No, no, let's focus on what we are seeing right now. What's in the back, he's not telling you about it. You cannot see it. Deal with the matter that's being discussed. Eight, which is probably one of the most important characteristics of the mirror. The mirror does not store the image. The mirror does not store the image. After I leave from in front of the mirror, and then Brother Riyad comes and look at the mirror. The mirror does not tell him, Riyad, you should have seen the thawb of Ustaz Bajur. Backbiting. 
ghiba we belittle the sin backbiting is a major sin that is so subtle that we fall into it sometimes without even recognizing and we make excuses i can tell him in his face go ahead but now he's not here but brother what i'm telling you about him is true habibi that is the definition of backbiting ya rasulullah what is backbiting he said alayhi salatu wasalam mentioning your brother was something he does not like she does not like in their absence he said, ya rasulullah what if it's true he said that's exactly what backbiting is if it's not true then becomes buhtan becomes a slander so if you are ever in a situation where backbiting is taking place around you first you try to stop it brothers sisters <laughs> he's not here what are you doing please stop if they do not stop assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah and you leave that gathering the minute you stay there and you start shaking your head with approval you are a partner in the crime you are a partner in the crime and listen subhanallah on the day of judgment you are excited and you can see the door of jannah and you're about to enter jannah you're about to enter jannah and you see a huge line yes what do you want remember you spread rumors against me in the community and they're all not true give me 5000 hasana and then you see a long line and said next oh you backbite me you used to speak behind my back in my absence i need 2000 hasana and all the hard work what is backbiting backbiting is that you give all your hard worked hasanat on a golden platter to the one you do not like on a day where i cannot give my mother one hasana i'm ready to give thousands of hasanat to a person i hated in this dunya because of backbiting the mirror does not store the image a brother a sister came to you and entrusted you with information and said this is between us what do we do we go to the other sister we go to the other brother brother i'm going to tell you something but keep it between us i promise not to say to anybody inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. you already fell in the trap the mirror does not store the image qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al ghafurur rahim bismillah wahda salatu wa salam ala man la nabiyya ba'da can i backbite when i'm alone if you ask this question 30 years ago it's impossible how could you backbite when you're alone now we can backbite through texting i start texting about my brother about my sister they're not there and i'm texting about them that falls under backbiting sometimes we fall in backbiting without even mentioning the person's name Brother, uh, what do you think of Brother Ahmed? Astaghfirullah <sighs> Rabbi. I'm fasting, brother. Don't ask me. Done! What did you imply? You imply something good? You did not even mention his name. The mirror does not store the image. Another great aspect of the mirror is that the mirror does not differentiate between black white 
Arabi, non Arabi, rich, poor. It gives the right image without any discrimination. When we start differentiating, that is the first step to failure. When, we, when I look at you and I see black, I see rich, I see Arabi, I see non Arabi, I see a doctor, I see a farmer, something is wrong with me. You are a believer, you're a practicing mu'min, you are my brother. Innama al Pakistaniyuna ikhwa, innama al Amerikan ikhwa, innama al Arab ikhwa, innama al Mu'minuna ikhwa. The believers are true brothers. This is what the mirror, what the mirror does. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave us the formula. Who is the best in the sight of Allah? Akramakum indallahi atqaakum. Done. The best of you, the most honored in the sight of Allah is the one with the most taqwa. Before we leave the house, we stand in front of the mirror to make sure everything is okay. My, 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 my shirt is clean, it's, it's ironed. Similarly, you have to have the right friends in order to give you the right advice. If the mirror is dirty, it will reflect the wrong image. If the mirror is dirty, it will reflect the wrong image. If you are surrounding yourself with the wrong people, they're gonna continue to praise you even though you are sinning and you are feeling so good. Rasulullah he told us, people are like silver and gold. And Wallahi, I know many brothers in this gathering that are gold and silver. So watch, who do you surround yourself with? Because they are the ones who's gonna give you either the right image or the wrong image. Some people on the day of judgment, they will scream and say, Ya waylata, laytani lam attakhidh fulanan khalila, laqad adallani an al-dhikr ba'da ijjani. On the day of judgment, Allah told us there are some people, they would say, I wish I did not take so-and-so as my friend. After I became righteous and I start wearing the hijab and I started leaving all the haram, they took me and dragged me back to where I was. I wish I did not take them as my friends. The minute I started and I stopped vaping, they took me back to the smoke shops and showed me the new flavors. My brothers and sisters, <coughs> this hadith, we should all memorize it. It's literally three words and two of them are the same. Al-Mu'min, Mir'at al-Mu'min. So all you have to memorize is one word, Mir'at, the mirror. The believer is the mirror of his fellow believer. Wallahi, this hadith is a foundation in manners. Foundation in manners. Let's apply it on ourselves in our household, at our job, and bi Allah ta'ala, you will see success in the dunya and in the akhirah. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana, wa israfana fi amrina, wa thabbit aqdamana, wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma wafiqna lima tuhibbuhu wa tardah. Allahumma ansur al-mujahideen fi kulli makan. Allahumma ya mughith, aghith ikhwanana al-mustadafina fi kulli makan. Rabbana, hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrat ayun. وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقوموا إلى صلاتكم Just a reminder إن شاء الله دربي صلاة الجنازة أنا شهادة after also إن شاء الله Please, brothers in the back room, in the main hall, move forward and fill up the main hall, please. <coughs>
close the gaps, inshallah, come close to each other. Look down, make sure the, the gaps are closed. Heels on the line. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو تدل الله أكبر <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده <تصفيق> الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Allah Akbar السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله just one need here the middle please to make way for the janaza the family have requested our beloved Sheikh Hassan Khalil to lead the janaza Sheikh Hassan if you are here please come forward The Janaza will be in Farmersville after that. Anybody would like to go, inshallah. Is Sheikh Hassan here? Okay. Bad, bad, we? Okay. <coughs> Please stand for the Salat exactly like we were standing. Fill up the gaps. Inshallah, Sheikh Hassan will explain the Salat. Please make space for the brothers. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Reminder of the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. Wa attaqullaha inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Reminder that we should look forward to go into Jannah. We should think about what we have done for our future, for our new home that we are created for, the home in Jannah. This is a reminder for all of us. Brothers and sisters, we all came to this dunya and we are not ready for it. The sad part is many of us leave this dunya and we are not ready for the hereafter. Al Hussein ibn al Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah, qal. ما رأيت يقينا لا شك فيه أشبه بيقين أشبه بشك لا يقين فيه ما رأيت يقينا لا شك فيه أشبه بشك لا يقين فيه إلا الموت I have not seen any certainty there is no doubt in it similar to a doubt that has no certainty in it what does that mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal wa jaat sakratu al-mawti bil-haq Death is a reality Al-lazhi khalaq al-mawta wal-haya liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala So death is a test, death is a reality that has no doubt in it But unfortunately we live our life as if death is a doubt that has no reality in it this is the sad part of many of us that we keep delaying. We go to work, we're coming back home. We go to play, we're coming back home. We go vacation, we're coming back home. You die, you're not coming back home. You die, you're not coming back home. This is something that we need to remember all the time. Every time you set your feet in the car, you make the dua, 
and you say, Wa inna ila rabbina lamunkalibun, surely we are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like you get in the car and you're going back home, you're coming to this dunya and you're going back home where you're supposed to be, inshallah, in Jannah. So this is the place that we're supposed to think about all the time. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he talked about death, he told us one thing, akthiru min dhikri hadim that. He did not say just every once in a while talk about death. He said, no, remember it abundantly a lot. Remember it a lot that way you prepare yourself. When you remember death, you prepare yourself. You don't know when you're going to die, where you're going to die, or how you're going to die. So you need to die as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ On the state of Islam, meaning you're always involved in good. That way when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you meet him on something good. And the best of all things that you can do is make sure you maintain your salah. Don't pray janazah when you normally don't pray at all. Or you pray Friday and you don't pray other days. Or you pray the times when you have time and the rest of it based on your time. You created here to pray. You created here to worship. And then the day of judgment is the time when you're going to be questioned number one about your salah. This is your tag. This is your name. This is your account. You don't have it. Forget the rest of the account. So prepare yourself all the time by being steadfast five times, a di five times a day, brothers and sisters, for the prayer to always connect you. When you're busy, stop and pray. That is Dhuhr time and Asr time. When you wake up, pray. That is Fajr. When you want to go to sleep, pray. That is Isha. That way you're always connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You skip one, you disconnected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's not a person preparing for the hereafter. So brothers and sisters, this is Janazah prayer. We are going to pray on this tomorrow. You're going to pray on me, and I'm going to pray on you. This is the way it is. This is the way it is. So it's not just a janazah that we're praying on. It's something that you're going to be in it. Some people, unfortunately, enter the masjid when they're dead, and they don't enter it before that. So brothers and sisters, pray with focus and make the dua with focus as if you're making dua for our sister Um Amjad. Our sister Um Amjad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on her soul. Brothers and sisters, make sure that you are sincere. It is four takbirat. The first takbirah, you recite Surah Al-Fatiha after that. The second one, you recite the Salah Al-Ibrahimi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. To the end, the third one, you make sincere dua for her. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit her to Jannah, protect her from hellfire, protect her from the punishment of the grave, and have and give patience and solace to her family, inshallah. And after that, the last takbirah is you make dua for everyone and then taslim. So please focus in your prayer and let's start the prayer. Allahu Akbar. الله أكبر الله أكبر
الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله So I'll just make way from here, the, the janazah is going from here, and uh, anybody would like to proceed and follow the janazah, go ahead, inshallah. If not, the janazah is in the farmer's bill. Uh, <coughs> Brother, you can sit down, please. We have a quick shahad, inshallah ta'ala. Just sit down for two minutes, inshallah. We have a sister that want to take the shahada. Brother Giovanni, are you here? Giovanni? Giovanni? Is Brother Giovanni here? Is the sister here? Able to find her, Ustad. She, she's not there? I cannot find her. Okay, inshallah. Khair, inshallah. So we'll, we'll do the shahada next time, inshallah ta'ala. Is, he wants to take shahada? Really? Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Sit down, ya shabab. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. How are you? What's your name? Alejandro. Alejandro. Subhanallah, we, we're expecting a sister, we got a brother, alhamdulillah. <laughs> and also brother uh, Tony took shahada yesterday. Where's Tony? Tony? What happened? Everybody's gone? Tony? Ah, where is he? Ah, Tony, come over here. <laughs> is brother Harry here too? Harry? Harry? Oh my God, he didn't even recognize you. <laughs> Allah Akbar. All right, let's start with the... Uh, all right. Anybody pressured you to become a Muslim? You can cl closer. Uh, no, no one pressured me. How did you know about Islam? Uh, my older brother, mashallah. A lot of these people, you know, a lot of these people that guided me towards the right path, a lot of Googling, a lot of YouTube videos as well, you know, so. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. We are so excited and we are so grateful that you are chose our, our masjid to take the shahada. All right, so we're going to do it in Arabic first, mm -hmm. and then inshallah ta'ala, we'll do it in English. Ready? Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illa, Illa, Allah, Allah, Wa, Wa, Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Anna, Anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Rasulu, Rasulu, Allah, Allah. I bear witness, I bear witness that that there is none worthy of worship. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad. That Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is his final messenger. Is his final messenger. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. We are so happy, and we ask Allah to keep you steadfast. And we ask Allah to make a reason for others to join. Yesterday, your brother Tony, he became a Muslim literally yesterday. He took his shahada. So too fresh. MashaAllah, we beg you to make dua for us because you are better than all of us. And here, I have someone very, very special to me. Look at this. Wallah, I did not recognize you. <laughs> Harry took shahada during COVID in the gym. I don't know if you ever remember the video. He took shahada over there. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbi I mean, he came from Hinduism. And he became a Muslim. And look at this. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahi, my heart is, is happy to see you. <laughs> Subhanallah. I see the beautiful Iman and the beautiful face. And not only that, we want to congratulate Harry. He became a Muslim, married a Muslim, and had a baby Muslim. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So, his name is Muhammad also. <laughs> you see, this is the beauty of Shahada. It's not about just that few moments that we take shahada here. It's about what happens after you're increasing the ummah with this shahada. So my brothers and sisters, work on your colleagues, work on your friends. Not only you are saving them from a major trouble, but you are also increasing the ummah. And this is the best example. Our beloved Harry. Harry, you want to say something to, the, to your brothers? Assalamu <laughs> uh, alaikum. It's always a pleasure and honor to uh, come to this masjid. I come from Los Angeles, California, but uh, Sheikh Ustad uh, Bajors, uh, last week's khutbah actually was again on this, that um, uh, who can guarantee that tomorrow you will come back to the masjid. And it's last one year I was trying to come uh, to meet uh, Sheikh, and I was like, after that khutbah, Sheikh, I have to come now. <laughs> I don't know what tomorrow I can <laughs> be here. We're so happy to have you, Habib. Your word, Sheikh, and, uh, and Alhamdulillah. 
not just um, you know, for all of us, like I just don't want to you know, hear and disobey. I want to hear and obey. Apply. Inshallah, may Allah protect me, my family, and all our Muslim brothers. Allah Akbar. Allah, we are so happy for you, and thank you for visiting us. May Allah reward you. May Allah protect you, protect your wife, and protect your baby, and make him, inshallah, ta'ala, the next Salah al-Din. Ameen, Rabbi Ali. Jazakum Allah khair. Come congratulate your brothers, both Alhando and, and Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Salam Habibi. Oh, the Lord.